hobbyists. Dear Vanessa, It's not you. It's me. Well, it's been just under 12 months since I built my Tamiya lunchbox, and as this was the first one I owned, I went for full box art. Okay, there is some discussion about how the advised Tamiya TS-16 is a different formula and how TS-34 is closer to the original colour, but on the instructions it clearly says TS-16, so that's what I used. I used all the decals that were provided, with the Tamiya logo and Vanessa on it and so on and so forth, and when it's all said and done, it looks outstanding and the yellow really catches the eye. I will admit though, early doors on this project, I very nearly did it up to look like the 18 van. Three reasons stopped me, after hours of research. Firstly, it's meant to be two-tone gunmetal and black. Now, I'm not sure if this is the Mandela effect, but when I look back to watching it on Saturday afternoons, it always looked black to me. And looking at ones that have been sprayed in a two-tone fashion, they don't seem to look right. But if you did just spray it black, I'm sure you'll drown in comments of it's meant to be two-tone. Another reason why I did not go down this route is the red stripe. On closer inspection, there is alternate pinstripe of colours either side of the red, and this would have been a complete ball ache to do. Trying to make it look bob on would be very difficult. The third reason why I did not go down this route is the wheels. Yes, I know the van is the wrong shape, but sometimes it's the smaller details that help to make these projects look like what they're supposed to look like, and I couldn't figure out the best way to do the wheels as they're supposed to be red and black, so by just going with black or just going by red wouldn't have particularly worked for me or even looked right. So I scrapped the idea and I decided to slap Vanessa on the side and go with the yellow serving suggestion. When my lunchbox was first built, I was ever so careful with it, driving gingerly like I am taxiing Hyacinth Bouquet around. I vividly remember the first time I whacked it into a curb, the dread and the horror that I felt. Soon though, it spent more time on its roof than it did on its wheels. When it fell off a mountain, I realised the honeymoon period was over. Since then, the chassis has had quite a few upgrades, as well as the suspension, transmission brace, and I did fit a beefier motor in it. Launching it off ramps and crashing has occurred, and mechanically, it's sound. The body, though, is showing signs of wear and tear, a little bit of battle damage, so to speak. Now, I'd imagine that some of you out there are thinking, what on earth is he doing? A bit of scarring adds personality, and to be perfectly honest, I would have to agree. But for me, one of the main reasons why I like the Tamiya lunchbox is its potential because it's got such a large canvas to it, and being a hard body, it makes it really easy to work with. And in honesty, design ideas are plentiful. So I can explore these, unfortunately, and very sadly, we have to say goodbye, Vanessa. Now, I know Tamiya will be employing people, a team of design experts, and over many, many meetings, or maybe a dart just thrown randomly, a design would come about to say what the best colouring is for the product, and for the adverts, to sell as many units as they could. So, when going off piste, think about the colour combinations. Go wild or stay mild. It's your hobby, minimalist or maximalist. Job one is to inspect the body for damage as it's easier to deal with these cracks and scrapes early on rather than having hours of work fall to pieces just before completion. I was lucky enough that I had no really bad parts. Yes, all the corners were scuffed and around the windscreen was a little bit worn away, but structurally it was fine. Again, if bad damage occurs, try repairing it as best as you can do or why don't you try and make it a feature? So for instance, you could put in back windows, flatbed truck perhaps, just cut it out and see what happens. It's whatever you can muster. To get this back to stock, the next process is to remove all the silverware 
For a recent present, I was able to get the Tamiya 8-piece screwdriver set. I've been looking for an excuse to break these out, and I have to say that I really like them. They are magnetic, and it holds screws well, as some screwdrivers are just magnetic enough to hold a screw just long enough to be held over somewhere perilous before choosing that it's no longer magnetic and dropping it, so you spend the next hour scrabbling around units trying to fish these out. The extended handle is really comfortable also, especially if you have large hands, so you don't feel like Andre the Giant trying to cross stitch the WWF logo onto a pair of all action swimming trunks. Again, I'm using these containers from Rill. One day I will actually get round to sticking magnets onto them, though today is not that day. Don't forget, we also need to take out the windscreen and the sunroof, as all we really need is the body itself. Everything will be repurposed, so try and keep things organised, as trust me, future you will be pretty annoyed if past you had made things go awry. We now eventually arrive at taking the decals off. A few methods could be used to remove these from the lunchbox. Option 1 could be to paint over them. That's ridiculous. The new paint will struggle to bite and you'll always see the shape of the decal underneath. Option 2 is to sand them off. Again, this would work, but I feel it's a lot of effort. Option 3 is to chemically strip them off. This would work really well but you would need to have a large tub to be able to keep the lunchbox in for an extended period of time where it can sit untouched. Also, the smell would have you licking your own eyeballs while listening to the Grateful Dead. I feel that this method would also be very messy and leave a sticky residue that you would also have to clean up, which could be quite frankly a pain. I picked option four, which is to try and peel these off with a knife. I did think if I was able to keep some of the decals intact, I would reuse them. How naive I was. I forgot after adding the decals originally that I hit it with several layers of Tamiya TS-80 flat clear, so they are welded on good and proper. I did consider of introducing some heat to try and get them off a little bit easier, but again I feel that this would create a sticky mess. So here I am picking off tiny edges of decals. In some ways it's like having to re-wallpaper, knowing that all the walls which you're going to be decorating are nice and flat, so it should be an easy job. But the old wallpaper is being a dick and coming off in shreds, creating mess and testing your patience. Long story short, I will not be able to reuse any of these decals. One side down, three to go. Here we are, all the decals are now stripped and as predicted I have a pile of tiny bits of decal. In the yellow, in this state, it reminds me of when British Telecom changed its corporate branding and suddenly every tiler had a yellow escort van with Telecom sun bleached into the sides. On a final inspection, this body does seem sound. What I think we will do though is use some Carson paint killer and try and get off any residual glue and gunk from the decals off the body. I will definitely sand the corners down to make them smooth and round again. Then I will prep the body ready for painting. I have already made a video on how to prep a Tamiya lunchbox, so why not go and check it out? So you don't miss out on further videos and similar nonsense, 
please like, feel free to comment, definitely subscribe, and press that bell shaped thingy to be woken up at all hours for further content. But for now, that's your lot.